Hi, I'm Larry Graff with Aspen Power Catamarans here. Um, we're down in Portland today and we've got Amanda, a uh, yacht broker from Fort Lauderdale. We met, I guess, three years ago now. Just about. And uh, we did a walkthrough on the boat at that point and she's a gal that just is super boaty, lives on a boat, sells boats, is boat, 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 and real inquisitive questions. And we thought, you know, let's do that again, get Amanda out. So flew Amanda out yesterday from Fort Lauderdale where it was just a bit warmer. A bit warmer. Yes. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was 85 there. Here it's like 55. Seems warm to me. Yes. And it stopped raining. We had about an inch of rain last night. So, wow. you know, that could have been more fun. Yes. So <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is just to walk through the boat. Um, the owner of the boat, uh, Stephen H., has loaned us his uh, C120. And uh, Stephen was a real creative guy, had a lot of really good ideas. And uh, we'll kind of show you those as we walk through. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Good. Start back here on the aft platform with the dinghy davits. So, uh, Amanda, this is kind of a new thing um, in the industry, really, and it's a davit that also has a big swim ladder on it. And the idea is that the owners wanted something to be a pretty good sized dinghy, and they wanted it to be really easy to swing it in and out. They didn't want to use a crane, and so we developed this, um, and I'll kind of show you how it works here in a minute, but. Basically, you push a button and you can lower your dinghy in or clip it in and it doesn't have to be lifted way up on the flybridge and it's really fairly quick. So, I'll just kind of show you what we do here. Okay. Right now we're using it as a fender storage spot. <laughs> and, uh, it's always so, useful. Yeah, yeah. You got to have your storage as you go. And uh, the first step here is to unclip the uh, support brackets here. What's the weight capacity on this? Um, this dinghy weighs about 200 pounds all up, and okay. that works really nice for it. Um, actually, I gotta hop inside here. Oh, gotta unhook the ratchet straps first. Yeah, that helps. That would be good. Um, these are stainless steel ratchet straps. They work really nicely. So they're not gonna rust and leave marks all over. Yeah, exactly. These Very important. Here keep us uh, from kind of smarring up the dinghy. Okay. And stuff like that. Um, and it's a. Uh, 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 320 uh, Walker Bay is what we typically use with your, um, you know, it's a rib, but it only weighs about 100 pounds, and then the motor weighs about uh, uh, 85 pounds, so really a nice package, and uh, top speed is about 20, 21, 22, Stephen, something like that, and uh, that works good, just unclip that. And then you got to gather the pads here. These are kind of protecting. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. There we go. Ah, okay. Yeah. Remote control. Very nice. Yeah. So here, you basically push the little down button. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to turn the switch on. That first. power. <laughs> There's a switch right here. Okay. We did that so that if you had grandkids or something, they wouldn't be able to to release it yeah that. underway that's smart so then oh gotta go up that take a little tension and then i can unclip ah uh, that's right one last safety yeah yep so this comes off now it's ready to go down okay and uh you go down a little bit it swings out and I'm going to step out here and give it a push okay. at this point. Kind of control it. See how it rolls out? Yeah, that's excellent. That Just right on that um, track right the there. The yep. Excellent. And you just unclip it and you're good to go. Yeah, and I like the, the large swim platform as well. Oh, one thing I forgot, which is typical, uh, and our owners do it occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> See what I forgot to do? Put in the plug. <laughs> yes. The How plug. many times have I done that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally normal. And that's when the rain drains out. I love yep. how it's, it just swings right in. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll take the other bracket here, or the strut, and clip that in. And get my little button here. And just tap it up at this point. Okay, into place. I saw that. Yeah. Very good. There's that one. And then this one here, you usually just pull it into place for that. Okay. 
and if it works just the way I'm hoping it will. It's easier just to grab and do that. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Now we just put the bracket straps back on and and she's yeah, steady and she's ready to go. It was literally two or three minutes. Really? And most of the time, it usually takes a lot more. Yeah, yeah. And I've actually launched it, um, you know, when it was really windy too and choppy, like a two foot chop. That's right. really hard to do with a lot of dinghies. Right, it so, is. It's very you know, sturdy. There's two of these. One is a smaller one for the front. Okay. And then for the back, there's a, uh, it's a little bit wider because there's two tubes back here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It also has a big drain right here in the middle, mm -hmm. and there's even night lights in there so that at night that kind of glows. Kind oh, of that's nice. This is a spot for a nice teak table here mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, so you can have a couple of chairs here, two people there, nice teak table. And then we have a place to store the table over on this side. I'm going to show you this. Those go back in their storage place. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we're nice those in a minute. But uh, in here you've got a uh, spot. Nice to have the teak table, but if you don't have a place to put it, then it's kind of a pain. I agree. So here you have oh, the teak table storing spot. Nice. And uh, you know that's that's really nice. And then you here got you've got access filters. to your fuel filters. And then right behind that are the is the pull lock valve right above there. You see behind? Mm -hmm. That's the fuel switching valve so that you can switch it from port to starboard on the fuel tanks. All where you can service them really easy. Shutoffs are right there. A lot of guys will bury these in a boat. That's so nice. Really hard to get to. Yes. Notice how this is all gasketed and um, all stainless steel hardware. And each one of these little swivels even has a little O-ring behind it. Wow. Um, all these white surfaces have been um, base coated, but then we come back and we overspray them with a uh, clear enamel so that they actually can stay clean. Right. Um, so lots of little details on an aspen. That makes it nice. Yeah. Here we just push that in. So Amanda. Yes. I want to show you my engine. All right, okay. let's see it. So this is an unusual boat in that it's a single engine power catamaran, okay? Mm -hmm. Most cats are gonna have two engines and um, basically my engine is in the starboard hull here. Okay. And um, it's a Volvo 435. It's a V drive, so the engine and all the sound and noise of the engine and the heat of the engine are outside of the bulkhead. So when you shut off at night, you don't have any of that heat radiating inside that your air conditioner then has to fight. Right. Which is really nice. And the nice part too is that serviceability, these hatches come up and you have just super duper access to it. But then you might be thinking, Larry, have you lost your mind? How do you make a catamaran run well where the engine is off four feet off the center line of the hull? Right. What I've done is the port hull is 35% thinner than the starboard hull. And it creates a lot less drag as it flows through the water because of that. And um, there's no appendage drag over there either. No keel, no rudder, no prop shaft, or any of that kind of drag. So that hull goes through the water really efficiently. This hull, a little bit bigger, is able to carry the weight of the engine, and it has a nice big keel on it, and then a really oversized rudder. I don't know if you would notice when we were docking, but we were able to just kind of drive the boat around, dock it just like you wanted. Yeah, and that makes a difference. The rudder on this thing is about 22 by 30 inches. A lot of my competitors have little itty bitty rudders, and you have to put one motor in forward, one in reverse to get it maneuver. It's like kind of a lot of work. So we, we like big keels, big rudders, we like good tracking and heavy seas. Yep. And this boat does that really nice. And then the other thing I've done is up in the bows to compensate for the thrust being off on one side, way up forward where I have a lot of leverage, what I've done is shaped it a little bit like an airplane wing. Okay. So as it flows through the water, it lifts starboard the thrust from the engine pushes port. And what my patents are all about is how you do that and have them always in balance. And when we go out and run the boat, you know, if you notice, you know that you can ease the throttle right on up to wide open throttle. 
and the boat tracks dead it's arrow. Straight. It's straight. It's straight. It's very unusual how easy it tracks, and um, that's what you want when you're boating. Boats that are constantly wandering are real pain. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on here. But the goal was a big boat that's comfortable, that's good in rough water, mm -hmm. that's super um, fuel efficient too. This is only about 11 gallons an hour at 17 knots. Wow. And so most boats this size are going to be 22, something mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. so really fuel efficient and really quiet, good for the environment, good for your pocketbook, good for your visa. Um, that's the kind of boat. That's what All we right. need. Let's, Let's see here. Okay. Here and show okay. You this. So um, this actually opens up here into um, the back part of the engine room and you can see that we have the thruster there and the the shaft or the rudder um, shaft there and um, notice the sound deadening notice how you've got your pump all the water pumps are right here along right in the engine room where you can get to them real easily Easy access right um, you see the blue bellows on the muffler there mm -hmm. that's so that you can uh, have a little bit of vibration dampening so you don't carry the vibration from the engine back into the boat Okay. And then look at this flat floor here. We actually have a space Let's see. where you can stand on a flat surface, which seems, uh, you know, kind of like normal, but a lot of boats don't do that. Um, here's another hatch here. And now I've got, I'm standing on a nice flat surface. I have super access to everything in the engine room. Um, battery switch is here for the steering thruster. And then the emergency parallel switch is right here. Uh, exhaust. Uh, pipe here uh, on the engine everything that we need to work on is basically right here you have your raw water strainer you have your fuel filter and your primer ball here the dipstick right there uh, the pre-filter for the engine oil and the final filter for the engine oil um, your air filter is back over here um, all of the accessory belts are right here your water pump is right here Everything that you need to work on is basically right here on the back of the engine and you're out in the daylight where it's, it's easy to see what's going on. And uh, these uh, hatches aren't going to fall on your head. No, they've got big gas springs on them. Notice how they're through bolted. Good sound deadening. Um, great big hardware here too. Another O-ring type piece so you don't even have any drips in your engine. Um, the gaskets all the way around. Um, this is the better sound deadening. It has the, uh, the kind of the lead layer. It's a vinyl lead layer inside so mm -hmm. the sound gets trapped in this. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, here you can see the little bit of shiny surface. That's more of that uh, enamel finish on the uh, base coat so it stays clean. Mm -hmm. Steering um, hydraulic ram is right here. Um, just so many things. We even give you a 12 volt outlet in the uh, uh, engine room here and a 110 volt outlet too. It's going to get cool here in Seattle and Portland in the next few months so we can actually put a heater in here and keep it nice and, and dry um, and warm. All your pumps and stuff are always back here where they're easy to get to. This is a little Y valve so that if you want to flush your toilets on salt water, you yep. can to save water, or you can flush them on fresh water. It's up to you. Okay. Um, and your oil goes in here. Your antifreeze is right here. Um, I mean, I'll open this other hatch to show you here too. Um, kind of all the access that we've got here. So, you know, this is your uh, crankcase breather filter here. And this is where you suck the engine oil out right here. Um, so like everything is super accessible in here. Uh, these Volvo V6s have just been fantastic engines for us. We've done about 24 Aspen 40s now since I've seen you. Yep. And uh, we have owners that are just tickle pink. And that's the goal is, is you know, having fun on the water and, and people that are happy with the boats that we built them. So 20 more holes since the last time. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. On it's this been... on this particular model, the Aspen yes. 40. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Notice the big gutters here. And uh, also, if you ever had to take the engine out, which no, so far no one ever has, but you take these four screws out and these are removable. Wow, and that's so great. There's easy. You don't have to cut any fiberglass to service the engine. And just as quick as that, these just close back up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you've got your, uh, and then you've got stairs like a yacht would have to come out of here. And uh, these are super, super quiet, super accessible. Um, this area here, I don't know if we looked, I think we did look in here. There's storage, show me again. There's storage in here. And, uh, this is a big storage bin. 
and you know a little bit of everything normal boat owner yep and um and it's all stays stays dry it's got gutters and and drains notice the back side of the cushions even have mesh so if they did get wet they can dry out okay seems obvious but a lot of guys don't do that um here is another great big storage area um look at the size of that wow and um these are heaters in the bags he's going to take you know we'll take them out of the bag here pretty quick but those are for keeping the lazarette. Here's the winch for for that uh, davit too. Okay. And uh, yeah, and it's got a little cover on it that's removable. Um, down here is another engine room area, and it's our our generator. And we use a Kohler 6kW generator here. All right. And uh, you can see the raw water strainer on the hull side and the shutoff for the muffler and uh, the water pumps are right back here on the uh, inside of the hull. Mm -hmm. The fuel filter for the generator is right underneath you there. And again, we've got steps here Go to down. come down and uh, you know, Access. another nice flat floor. But take a look at this. The things you need to work on are right here. This little cover comes off mm -hmm. and for the generator, you've got everything you need. Your antifreeze here, your oil filter, your fuel filter here, your raw water pump here, your accessory belt, everything right there on the back end of the generator. And these, these Kohler generators are just fantastic. Yeah. They start up, they run, and the only way we have anybody stop them is they, they fill up their uh, pickup with uh, seaweed. <laughs> and right. Then and then they have to have a, a, water, pump, a water pump and color change. change. Yeah. But that's kind of any generator. Mm -hmm. But it's designed where it's not too hard to do. Notice how the wiring here is all loomed. So throughout the whole boat, all the wire in the boat is made uh, by Cobra in Michigan. So it's U.S. made wire that's tinned marine wire. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we'll also wrap it with a, a, a protective sheath here. This little hose here is set up so that you can suck out the... Um, and we hook it up to drain the engine oil for the generator. Nice. Right from the Makes factory. Makes it really easy. And uh, all PEX tubing throughout the boat. Uh, so even if it did freeze, it wouldn't wreck your tubing okay. and, and cause leaks. These are nice little LED lights all over the cockpit. We use them uh, quite a bit. Actually. All right. Oh, one thing too to show you is, you see that, that throughout the boat, we have done a machine label here. And uh, so there's one there, and then there's one right here. Everything is labeled, not with stickers, but actually with a computer machined label that then, is, you know, a piece of plastic that's glued in place that'll last for the next 20 to 50 years. I hate paper labels that are going to wear out. That's great. So, a lot of details. Yeah, there. great attention to detail. Yeah. Um, let's see here. We're on the back cockpit here. While we're here, we've got to kind of show you this. This is... Yes. Um, a really neat feature everybody loves and you know it basically lets you kind of in a second Bye. just like that you can be out of the weather or you can have your air conditioning and you can have that back this just folds up has a little latch to support it nice got nice overhead lights here uh, switch must be off Overhead speakers. Um, this is a nice little Burmese teak table. Um, and you'll see all the tables of the boat are done with this Duratec finish. And this is a mineral filled polyester that um, basically is almost exactly like gel coat. It's super tough, holds up in the sun. And uh, I mean, it's a wonderful finish and it looks gorgeous. And then you've got. Where else is this finished throughout the boat? Uh, we use it in the. Uh, uh, all the tables, and then we even use it on the floorboards down below. It's That's same great. Duratec. It's so tough, you can actually use it as a flooring finish. Wow. Um, but uh, pretty neat. This piece here is removable so that, you know, when when you're not using the boat, you can just get it off and take it inside. Okay. Um, and, you know, same thing with these here. Now you can fish from these. Yeah. Look, look at that. Oh, wow. So uh kind of fun and then on uh, some of the new boats we've added another bracket in at the uh, dinette so you can have one of these out in the aisleway in the dinette oh very nice so, uh, birds and things like that everything
everything is just so easy. You know, that's the goal. This is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a snap-on cover for this. Uh, you've got a raw water wash down here on the back deck. Um, here's where your water, water goes in for the uh, starboard side tank. Uh, port side tank is right here. And then this switch panel too is kind of fun to peek at. So you've got all the switches that are going to control things on the back deck right here rather than having to walk back and forth up to the front of the boat. Oh, that's really nice. So this is an option that a ton of people have gotten. This was an owner's idea again. And it's a, it's like a Yeti built right into the boat. Wow. And uh, it's How long will it hold ice? A long time. Um, you know, three, four days with mm -hmm. a full, you know, it depends on how hot yeah, and, and how much see. you're using it. But, you know, look at the thickness yes, of the insulation. Yes, of the insulation, right. Yeah. Gasketing everywhere. That's been a really big thing. Uh, I think we've only got one boat without it here in the last uh, uh, probably two years. So. Wow, that's great. Um, let's see. These are the stairs up to the flybridge. They're kind of neat in that the shape of the handrail follows the stairs so that your, your arms stay in the right spot as you, as you go up. You've got a nice safe access to the back of the So up on the front deck here, um, when we designed the cab on the boat, um, we set it up where um, you have one deck trail that's 14 inches wide and the port side is uh, about 8 inches wide. Still very functional, but I, I wanted that extra, you know, 4 or 5 inches in the salon. Mm -hmm. And so this works out pretty well. Let's just go forward here. Um, first thing you notice, you see the little noggin here? The little step? A lot of that you have to look for the deck trail right, right in the back. Uh. And this it pushes it overboard. So we just run it right overboard. Nice. And then nice big 14 inch wide deck trail, but you see the little bump here? Yes. Your foot can't slip off and gives you a little feedback. And I like where that handrail is hitting on the side of, of someone yeah. as tall as you are. Look at the size of the handrail. Inch and a half stainless steel. Yeah, it's very and safe. Where it comes into the boat, it's over an inch thick. Wow. So kind of fun. And to your left is another handrail. Where the gals were pretty involved in the design, they wanted to have really safe, easy access going forward. Uh, one of the things you can kind of see is just the gel coat here. The gel coat Aspen uses is uh, a material called Barber Coat. Mm -hmm. um, it's so far above normal gel coat in quality, it's just incredible. It's about $7 a pound for the colors that we use. Um, and, uh, and it just holds up. If you look at an Aspen, and we're at the back where you can see one that's eight, nine years old. Gel coat it's looks the same. Identical to one that's brand new. Wow. That's that's the very best gel coat on the man. So wow. all the rails are 316 stainless steel. Every all the rails are through bolted. None of that sets screws and you see a lot of boats with little Frankie. fittings. And sets yeah. Screws. And fittings where your rings and stuff will catch on them can be dangerous. We mm -hmm. don't like that. Mm -hmm. Um here you've got the venturi for the uh fly bridge that flips the airway. Nice set of stainless steel horns. Um, I don't know if it shows in the camera. If you look back now, this is solar clear glass, Amanda. This is the glass that reflects about 50% of the sun's energy back out before it even gets into the boat. The sun keeps and it nice and cool. It has a ceramic coating, kind of like what they use on a skyscraper. Wow. It's kind of expensive, mm -hmm. but it really, really works great. So here we've got um, pantograph wafers on, uh, on all across the front of the window. intermittent too. So, so if you have a misty day, you know, you can do that. These are Bomar hatches here and they're strong enough to walk on, you know, so kind of... Wow, like, Larry! <laughs> 230 pounds on a hatch. Are you saying that on video? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tell us what you weigh. No, it's <laughs> alright. Um, this is uh, an LED nav light here. Uh, all the nav lights, basically all the lights in the boat are LED. These are rated for 20,000 hours. Um, really nice and bright. Um, here we've got uh, uh, the uh, anchor locker. Look at the size of the hinges yeah. and stuff here. All 316 stainless on a gas spring. Again, nice white surface inside. You can see we've got the bitter end there for the uh, anchor line. Yeah. And then up farther forward, if you stick the camera in, there's actually a wash. Walk around if it'll rotate. I don't know if it will. There it did. Yeah. Oh, there it's not. Okay, there's a uh, a wash down there so that when oh. you're bringing the line in, you can actually spray it off. Cool. Kind of fun. Uh, 
goes through a wear test. The wear test lasts about six times as long. Okay. And it's UV stabilized. It's again twice the price, but it's what you should use on a boat. Right, so, if you want it to last. Right, and that's kind of our whole gig. You know, from the gel coat to the vinyl to the windows to everything about the boat is to build it right so the customer can play with his boat and not have to work on his boat. Right. Um, let's see, you can see the gunneling here has a stainless steel insert. We do that on the bigger boat. On a smaller boat, we tend to use the vinyl insert because the smaller boat guys kind of bang on things a little bit more. Um, and if you hit the stainless stuff hard, it'll it'll dimple a little bit. So mm -hmm. we find on the yachts it works much better. Mm -hmm. On the smaller boats, we can order it with stainless, but most guys have better luck with the vinyl, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, gotcha. Uh, let's see, good shot of the front windows here. Look at the visibility, and we'll see that when we're at the helm, but you know, I just have phenomenal visibility here. Uh, this is the deck trail. Oh, these things are kind of fun. These are from Newfound Metals in Port Angeles. Okay. And it's kind of a stylish cleat, um, real solid, you know, big, 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 heavy duty cleat. Look at how solid those rails are. Beautiful. This is the deck trail. That's smaller, okay. And, uh, but still, I mean, I'm size 12 feet, they fit fine. So. Yeah, I feel very comfortable, <laughs> and it, it comes up to about my thigh right here. Alright, you can go around the other side. Okay. Am I missing anything? The windlass? Uh, oh, yes. That's a key one. Alright. Uh, you ready? So we almost forgot the windlass. Uh, we use a Lumar windlass, again made in the United States. Uh, it's got a nice cone clutch in it. Um, there's controls here. You know for in and out but we also have a switch um, at the helm and we tend to do about one and a half times the length of the boat in 5 16 chain and then 250 feet of uh, half inch nylon line it's kind of woven together and this can this gypsy can take line and chain okay and then we do a lot of fortress anchors uh, the aluminum uh, anchors with the right amount of chain work wonderful and if you ever did have a windlass failure you can still pull it out right all right, smile. <laughs> okay, it's kind of the double-handed deal here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so one of the things that's kind of fun here is this grill. So uh, right at the top of the stairs, all of the surfaces up on the flybridge are actually angled so the water on the flybridge runs back to this. And then it actually runs down this tube here and to a through hole overboard. Nice. So kind of fun. Nice. Um, but so yeah. Dripped on downstairs, you're saying. Yeah. So here we're up on the flybridge, and this is a new design that Stephen had us do where the, uh, uh, you know, you've got two seats up here. Very nice. Um, the original boat only had one helm seat, and then the um, seating up here was slid forward about two feet. And it just, it, it was uh, an idea. He's like, you know, uh, Denise wants to sit up here with me. So, you know, we did that. And uh, so we had to extend the seating and redo the tooling and then build a swing table here too. You know, quite a project. Um, yeah, yeah, it's got, uh, Steven's got an amazing stereo system in here. Uh, I'm not sure how many amplifiers we have, but lots of them and huge stereos. Um, this seat back here can be um, lifted up and removed, so you have a big sun pad. And then this uh, is removable here. here I'll All right, show good. You how you do it? Let's yeah. see. Oh, beautiful table. Yeah, isn't that neat? And then it also can fold on itself like that. Let me show you that. Nice. Stick that over here. But uh, this can be swung over here. Come right here, like that. You can also fold this to here. You've oh, got a nice! Of drink holders, spin it around, and slide it right in that corner. So this has been a real popular option. We've only—I don't know—I'm sure we built any boats uh, in the original Without configuration that. on the flybridge. And this can go down. You said to this make one, create one big. Yeah, yeah one big sunbed. One big sunbed, right? And. Uh, Again, this idea was Steven's idea, and he's like, could we do this? And I was like, oh, it's kind of Way to go, to Steven! <laughs> but uh, he wanted it, and we built it. You make it happen Big for your storage owners. Storage area. Wow. Look at the size of that. Notice it's gasketed everywhere. Yep, access. And uh, really nice. 
and then uh, getting all this to swing and swivel was a bit of a project. Um, then look at this here. Huge storage area here too. Wow, yeah. You know, for all that stuff that's, uh, you know, on a boat. Yeah. So, uh, and then these swivel as well. Uh, the thing Stephen asked for was uh, dash with a little bit of color on it. Uh, okay. And the new hat for it. That looks beautiful. And, uh, yeah. it ties into the colors. And when you're cruising here, Amanda, the, the Venturi... We saw that as we were going. Yeah. It's beautiful. Special. She yeah, rode, just all... like you said, fluffy like a cloud. <laughs> These seats are Bentley seats. They're actually made in Portland here. And they're a contoured bucket seat that's a nice size and uh, and it's dual density foam too. And again, they're coated, they're, they're, uh, the vinyl is an Olympus vinyl on these. Very, very nice. So, High quality. Yeah. Beautiful. Questions about, oh, Stephen had us do subwoofer up here. Uh-huh, I noticed. Uh, actually right there. Yep, behind. He's got an amazing stereo. Well, I'm sure he's rocking up here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome.